Welcome to the Motoring Podcast, a Kia Stinger 3.3 V6 GTS Special Edition. Hello, I'm Alan. Hello, I'm Andrew. Finally, finally, this is not my car, nothing to do with me, and he's put the proper title in. It's brilliant. It's only taken I d- I 330-something episodes. I, I actually cut out the TGDI. It should be V6 TGDI GTS. It's close Special enough. It's edition. closer than you've ever been. Yeah. Normally, uh, you'd have just gone, was... the, yeah, Kia Stinger. Well, I just wanted to sort of, I just wanted to, you know... Thank you for making an old man happy. Yeah. Well, I've got to because you didn't end up with this car, which no. was the original plan. No, let's talk to, talk everyone through this. I had the the V six three point three liter Kia Stinger uh, GTS. Uh, I was only meant to have it for one week. I ended up having it for nine weeks. Why is that, Alan? Did you move house? <laughs> yes, that was it. I moved house. No, I barely moved from the house, I think, was the problem. Yes, I got this the day that lockdown was announced. I got it about half past three in the afternoon. Uh, went out, took some pictures, came home again, and then that was Boris Johnson going, <laughs> lockdown. And uh, so, as a result, uh, it, 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 it stayed here for quite some time. Over which time, and I'm going to apologize for this and come completely clean about this i covered 124.3 miles that's that's ten thousand words isn't it oh well i did ten thousand god that's, that's a long-term test for some people i mean nine weeks doesn't matter if you're not actually driven it anyway <laughs> <laughs> didn't even have to put fuel in it, it was amazing <laughs> I barely used half a tank that's so depressing uh because you know normally we get a car we go out we use it we refuel it where necessary which is most of the time i think it's fair to say yep I think the only other car I've not had to put fuel in actually was the Jeep Wrangler. Uh, and I still covered twice, three times this distance. So th- that's kind of what happened. So please, I don't want to use this one, bear with me. But this is not on the usual basis that we, that, 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 that we, do, that we do tests. In these unprecedented times, is that what you want to say? Don't, don't, no, 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 not unprecedented times. That's just, are we going to have a? Do, do we need moody music in the background and no. possibly both of us on a Zoom call or something? <laughs> going. Yeah. How, how do you switch this off? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hello, hello. Can you hear me? Oh no, we've had that already once tonight. Right. So come on, talk me through this engine then. The Stinger. Uh, a V6 3.3 liter engine puts out 361 brake horsepower from it from a, a turbocharged V6, uh, and that goes to the rear axle only via an eight-speed automatic gearbox. The Stinger is the first Kia to be sold uh, in the UK that's rear-wheel drive. Mm. Now. A quick talk about the rest of the Stinger range. This may or may not still be appropriate by the time you come to listen to this, because the Stinger range is was also available with a 2-litre, 242 brake horsepower petrol and a 2.2-litre, 197 brake horsepower diesel. But those are being phased out to leave only the V6. They are sort of available while stocks last. Okay. All of those have only ever been available with the aforementioned 8-speed auto. Most people that I've spoken to who've driven the other stingers say well 3.3 is the best uh, there have been at least one dissenting voice saying that the diesel is possibly a better ownership proposition because you get many of the good things with fewer drawbacks or something i don't know i haven't driven it the diesel engine's pretty decent exactly and you get all the comfort and all the nice stuff yeah. The Sting itself is a fastback Grand Tourer. So it is quite a large, well, it's a very large car. It's uh, almost five meters long. It's 4.94 meters, if I remember correctly. And it's a four door fastback. Think Rover SD1, but done right. No, don't think. Never think that. I love the Rover SD1, by the way. It doesn't no. have the modular dash that the SD1 has. No. Uh, the range starts, if you can still get one, uh, from £32,925 for the 2-litre petrol. But the V6, which is the only one that matters, starts from £41,145. The one I drove cost £41,810 on the road. And I'll explain why that was in just, oh seconds, uh, when I explain that it came in high chroma red. Uh, which is like Mazda Soul Red. So that really nice Very nice. And that costs uh, £665 in colour tax. And if I've done my maths correctly, that'll mean that that was the only option on the car. There really aren't any options you you can choose above and beyond mud flaps. 
and mats. Okay. Is is basically it. That's what you've got. That and, and tow bars. The other colours available are pearl white, which is white, <laughs> midnight black, which is metallic black, ceramic grey, which is it's bordering on the oops we forgot the paint. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a bit like Porsche Porsche's crayon colour. Mm. Ember orange <laughs> and uh Panther Metal, which is a, a dark grey. Ember orange <laughs> is exempt from the color tax possibly because it is too much color but and all the rest are 665 pounds there's quite a lot of metal to cover so 665 quid doesn't seem too awful Mm -hmm. now one of the few things that you can option at the time of purchase is our service packs okay and they come in two flavors you can buy three services for 429 pounds and six services for 1159 pounds and you think that's great that's three years of servicing for 429 pounds and then you read the small print and realize that servicing is every six thousand miles or six months wow so it's actually 18 months worth of services for 429 pounds and three years of services for 1159 it's still not ridiculous to be honest but just be aware that it is a 6,000-mile service interval on the V6 Stingers. Right. Yeah, that was one of those ones where you're reading through the small print. You think, that's really good. That's good. And then you go, oh, hang on a minute. Glad I read that. Anyway, outside. Mm-hmm. As I said, this is a long car. This is a low car, and this is a wide car. It's it's also a, a coupe. It's very classically styled like as a gt car so it's got that long long bonnet it's got a very short front overhang in fact whenever you open the bonnet you can see that the it's almost a front mid engine because the the engine basically starts behind the front axle and it's got that long long overhang at the back it's it's really it's properly cab backward it really is it's 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 all there for the bonnet and everything what it doesn't have are loads and loads of look how clever our metal bending is uh <laughs> style uh, slashes and creases i could do this in cad <laughs> yeah basically basically it is i mean it it, it doesn't have any as i say it doesn't have any of that look how clever we are there are a couple of little fake grills on the bonnet but there are also real vents behind the front wheel arches, which are described as wheel arch gills in, in the material. And, you know, it makes a front air curtain. So it sort of ducks. So the, 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 the vents in the front are real because they, they, they duct air around the front wheels for better, better aero and all that kind of fun stuff. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, it's just, you know, the really classic, that nice uh, sort of larger Kia sort of tiger nose type grill it's just there it's nice i love the rear simple sort of uh, trapezoidal stroke tri- triangular rear tail lamps which then sort of come down and meet the marker lights on the side so there's a bit of sort of visual interest and 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 stuff going on there to make it just a little bit different but not in a Ooh, it's different type of way as you you get with some cars so lots of Simple themes done nicely on a really classically proportioned vehicle. Obviously, when you get to the details, there's some nice uh, quad elliptical exhaust. There are massive Brembo brakes. More about them later. Really tasteful 19-inch alloys that cover up the wheel studs and look like they're center locks. Mm. Uh, They're styled in that kind of way. Uh, But, you know, not in a look at my center locks. It's just, oh, that's clever. Look what they've done there. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots of people commented on it. Well, when I say lots and lots of people, uh, some neighbours called across the street and the chap at the Tesco Click and Collect, um, <laughs> which basically makes up most of the people I, I saw and spoke to. So uh, when everyone I was anywhere you near saw. This car, yeah. <laughs> um, is all commented on it, all said, I really like that. There was a little bit of a, I really like that, what is it? Mm. But just people, it was one of those cars where people spontaneously said how much they liked it. Uh, and voiced a voiced a positive opinion uh one chat from two doors down was like i like it but i'd still choose a german car because that's what i like and that's what i've always wanted but mm, yeah this is a really nice thing that's just, there you go there's my it's it's quite a quite a focus group i i i managed to drag in on this <laughs> so what's the inside like then uh well 
let's start at the back. So the very back, first thing you notice when you go to open the boot is that you can open it from the key, from the dashboard, or from the button on, on you know, handle underneath. Uh, and it is a full auto and remote hatch lift and lower. Uh, great whenever you don't really want people touching the car, so you can just do it from, from inside and it, all James Bondy and stuff. <laughs> and it's a big, big hatch. So mm. it's actually quite a thing. Uh, and it goes right the way up, well above head height, to expose the boot. The boot itself is kind of large, flat, and pretty square. 406 litres with the seats up, uh, 1114 with them folded. It's a big car. There's quite a lot of rear wheel arch intrusion, mm -hmm. really. But what's left is is square and easy to use. No curry hooks, though. Shame on you, Kia. Shame. No curry hooks, no handy little cubbies down the side. Any false floor? Uh, no, it was straight into a full-size spare underneath. Oh, okay. Uh, so there wasn't even any sort of tray bit where you could sort of break the end off a baguette and use it to stall the baguette or anything. So my <laughs> my my huge numbers of packed badly by other people's shopping bags <laughs> seemed to did, did tend to shift around quite a bit on the way home, even going carefully because you knew that that was the case. Moving forward to the rear seats, they're quite heavily sculpted and the outer seats are quite inboard. They're very much right behind, right behind, if not slightly closer together than the than the front seats, uh, meaning there's that kind of two thirds lump for someone in the middle. Should they really have to travel there? I mean, it's really just a box ticking exercise. It, it does give the impression it's more of a four door cruiser rather than a f uh, sorry, four seater rather than a five seater. Yes, yes, it is. Very much so. Four adults, perfect. Not really meant for, like, three kids across the back. Though. Uh, that and a very significant transmission tunnel as well. To be expected with something that low, though. Yeah, I mean that you don't you don't really want to be in the, in the middle. Outer pair, though, heated as well. Mm -hmm. So all the luxury. Really quite comfy. It's very low, but you do sit uh, sort of low. Uh, there's quite a low hit point, quite reclined. So rather than the sort of upright bus type seating, it is very much more, uh, very much more sitting back. That means there's actually loads of headroom, loads okay. of shoulder room, plenty of knee room, plenty of foot space. Just don't be in the middle. Uh, is all I, I can say really. Obviously, if you don't have someone in the middle, there's there's a little armrest that folds down, has a couple of cup holders in uh, as well. Uh, the only color available for the interior now, now previously you could have red and another color as well, but the only color available from now on is black Okay, uh, inside. Not a huge deal. Uh, the windows go quite far back, so you don't feel that you, if you turn to the right or to the left, you're just going to be looking at C-pillar. Uh, you are actually looking at looking at windows. And there is a massive opening glass roof. Oh, okay, yeah, that which help. is brilliant. Yeah. yeah, really good. So it's not claustrophobic at all. Good. The roof also opens. I, I can't remember if I said that a second ago. The roof also opens at the front half. It goes right back as well. And there's an electric blind. Uh, which can cl which you can close over it as well if it's too bright or if you're parking it in the sun okay, so yeah, that yeah. the whole car doesn't cook. It's a good idea to just, just flick that. Really lovely action on it too. <laughs> well, it's one of those ones where if you just press it a little bit, it goes back as the first setting. You press it again, it goes right back. Mm. But if you just give it a whack on the switch, then it does the whole roof and blind and everything opens right the way up. Uh, and the same with closing as well. Really nicely. It's nicely done. It was it was one of those things where I was driving so little, but yet the weather could be quite nice. So it was yeah. quite nice to just, just tap it, open it up, and, and get some, some fresh air at the same time as, as some exhaust note. Up front, again, reclined is, is, is a good way of describing most of this. They're big, sporty armchairs. Uh, <laughs> both front seats are electric, uh, uh, memory, blah, blah, blah. And the driver's also has fully adjustable lumbar support. So up, in, out, up, down, whatever. Uh, and of course, uh, adjustable bolsters as well, both on the squab and the backrest. So you could make it, you could really tailor it to to just the size you wanted. Um, 
yeah it was great that was also one of the favorite things about my infinity mm -hmm. at the time was that you could make the seat just for you and and on a big gt car that's perfect uh seats here were also heated and cooled Excellent. uh mentioned very briefly that they have memory settings the memory of course integrated with the mirrors the steering wheel which was electric uh the heads up display and the cluster display so it remembered all your settings uh, okay. uh, based That's good. on your key yeah, yeah. a good. proper big car stuff the instrument binnacle analog dials for speed and revs as well as fuel and water temperature embedded within them uh everything else uh, showed on the screen between the main dials. So that's stuff like what uh, what gear you'd selected, what drive mode, outside temperature, time, all the usual computer navigation range, turn left in three miles type stuff was all in there too. Yep. Uh, sat nav and entertainment, very much of the there's the plunked tablet variety. <laughs> um, it's a system basically bar, bar some skinning. It's a system that that uh, that's shared across Hyundai and Kia, so it's good. You know, CarPlay, Android Auto, as well as good sat nav. I think they use TomTom. -tom. I think it is TomTom -tom based, yeah, and and all that kind of stuff is 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 all in there. Underneath the the, the tablet, there's physical buttons to access some of the key features so to go straight to music to go straight to nav all these kind of stuff mm -hmm. these kind of things are there uh climate control settings uh most of the other buttons so for your all around 360 degree ultra camera vision for the auto start stop all that kind of stuff was right back beside the the, the central armrest very very high binnacle right the way through a uh, tiny little stubby forwards and backwards controller for for selecting which gear for for working the auto box basically oh okay you could just move it forwards backwards to the side whatever depending on what you were doing it worked really nicely nice little just fingertips fingertip action just 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 good cool so in front of uh, i've jumped bits now you see in front of the gear selector obviously then there's where in the olden days we used to have ashtrays and uh, nowadays we have a hidden 12 volt socket a usb and a qi charging a wireless charging for your phone in there armrest in the middle has a massive multi-story cubby with little shelves and all sorts of stuff okay um uh, as well so you can store all sorts of bits and pieces in there the little tray in the upper bit has a, a little sort of pseudo fabric base to it to stop stuff rattling around uh, as well which was quite a nice touch a uh, couple of cup holders gear selector is over to the driver's side so depending on whether you're right if your right hand drive is to the right side if your left hand drives to the left obviously all the stuff for electric uh, part brakes auto holds uh, and the drive mode selector are all behind the the, the gear selector and we'll we'll talk about that uh, again in 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 a little bit Whilst the seats in this are all are all uh, advertised as being Napa leather, some of the other bits, well, it's it, it's not off a cow leather. It's more sort of leatherette, type okay. pseudo stuff. But on the uh, but it's nice on the top of the dashboard. You know, is is has a complete soft touch covering of that. So it, it's a material that has been placed over the top of plastic it's not just you know it's something which is on there and is is stitched and, and that kind of stuff uh center console and some of the buttons are also brushed aluminium style metal so so just nice to touch and hold and and anything like that you know it was all properly finished there were no bits where you went oh well, that's a bit tinny uh, mm. and i mean that anywhere i mean that right throughout the cabin uh, even the bits where sometimes uh, you know in in smaller in smaller in in in, in cheap uh, i don't want to say cheaper vehicles but you know in in other vehicles you might sort of reach under the bottom bit of the dash and go oh look at this it's all cheap not that anybody would ever touch it yeah, well yeah. naturally of course i had a poke at it and and it was it wasn't it's all i can say is it wasn't mm. uh, it was all good quality throughout we even right back as far as the boot which is where stuff normally gets you know, as you go down, as you go back, the quality of plastics gets lower and lower in car interiors. Mm. It didn't really. It was very much on a par with big German brands, if not better Excellent. as ever. Okay, well, you told us that you didn't do too many miles, but you did a few miles. Well, what's, yeah, did, what's it like to drive? 
Well, to drive to Tesco and back early on a Thursday morning, it's just fine. Deals with the speed bumps quite well. <laughs> it deals with the speed bumps exceptionally well. It does, and given its 20 miles an hour limit between here and Tesco, it, it, it dealt with it beautifully. Yes, smooth, easy, just completely fuss-free when really you didn't really need any more fuss in the world. But it's a 1900 kilo car that does 0 to 60 in 4.7 seconds and can reach 168 miles an hour as a top speed. It can shift. And on a couple of occasions when I did actually get a chance to stick it on some dual carriageway and, and, and sort of twitch my right foot, it shifted. And it was great. I managed a couple of outings as lockdown was was being lifted. And I did have a lot of fun on some of my favorite roads locally. I mean, I was I was never more than 15 miles from home, to be perfectly frank. But that 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 allows some some decent roads around here, which is which is fantastic. Five driving modes. Eco Comfort Sport, Sport Plus, which turns off the stability control. So I didn't uh, <laughs> use that. Uh, and one called Smart. And smart constantly monitors sort of how you're driving, how sharply you're braking, what the road surface is like, and constantly uh, and basically picked for you. The GTS has uh, electronically adjustable suspension, so it was it was choosing uh, it was choosing the damping, it was choosing all that kind of stuff uh, as we went along. How much noise could I make? Uh, well, I could make plenty. Some of it does come from an active sound enhancement system. I'm going to be completely honest. I only discovered it was from an active sound enhancement system when I was reading the press back as I made the notes to record this. <laughs> okay. It's very, it's very natural. But it still sounds better when you've got the roof back and you can hear real exhaust. But it, it sounds right and f and and correct for the car it never sounded synthetic or made up or anything silly oh that's good yeah kept on the road uh by pretty chunky 19 inch alloys uh with uh big wide tires front and rear uh which is which was good because whenever you sort of if you nailed it coming out of a corner you could feel it squirm a little bit nothing would kick in there was no there was no no noticeable intervention but you could feel that this was a powerful rear wheel drive car uh old school styly and that was great that added to the that added to the fun of it but knowing that i hadn't turned it to sport plus and that all the systems were still there to catch me if i was being a bit of a tit then um <laughs> then that was a that was good to know uh as well i mentioned the brakes earlier on 350 mil diameter front 340 mil diameter rear grooved vented and drilled all around with whopping brembo multi-pot calipers uh, at least four pot anyway uh they looked good worked even better really nice really good stuff do you like it when i do like it when a car can stop <laughs> yes well i find it's 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 handy for my safety um but no they looked great because the alloys that were on it was quite five quite thin spokes that sort of y out at the at the end as they meet the rim there was a lot of brake on display uh and good looking brakes good looking brakes <laughs> uh overall with this though i do feel really bad i couldn't take it on a proper journey as i said never really more than 50 miles from home this would have been a perfect car to cross europe i would have loved to take this down through france i would have loved to take it out across germany on on one of these one of these significant trips that that, that i normally make a few times a year you could easily get to to get to at least to frankfurt without being tired definitely this proper continental cruiser uh, and it's a real shame that i i felt like i was keeping it on a really close leash and not really getting a chance to 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 let it stretch its legs uh country rides around here were fun but they're not you know as i say it's a four meter long it's an almost five meter long car uh some of the wiggly roads of rutland don't necessarily um uh, aren't necessarily conducive to a, to a car that big mm -hmm. uh, and that's that's just using the wrong car on the wrong road really or the right car on the wrong road fuel consumption wise i got 20.1 miles per gallon once i'd let it open up a bit i was getting 17 for most of the time which really is at the worst end of the spectrum okay yeah. that's as about as bad as it gets is, is that sort of cold car starts up trundles two miles gets turned off gets started up 
still kind of cold to get strundled two miles again combined is meant to be 27.7 on big engine cars like this you tend to find they get pretty close to 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 what the fuel consumption figures are uh, on these so whilst the number looks a little bit scary it's it's probably pretty accurate Mm. Uh, i know that with my 3.6 liter infinity i was getting 30 uh, i was getting about the 30 mark in normal mixed driving i would imagine this is similar technology it has all the safety stuff you'd expect so we've got the adaptive cruise lane keeping assist lane departure warning blind spot monitoring blah 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 blah, blah, blah. insert as appropriate also had an absolutely amazingly excellent harman kardon stereo so good that i commented about it early on in this and then have subsequently released a special edition uh, where i was chatting to one of the the very senior engineers from from harman uh, who worked on the the stinger program uh, they'll be linked in the show notes if you haven't listened to my, my chat with wolfgang then please please do because it, it it's quite illuminating it's quite quite interesting yeah um but yeah early on in lockdown I, I needed to be somewhere other than the house preferably somewhere that was warm because it was like minus two outside at the time and and one night i just went out and sat in the car and left it one of the reasons for the poor fuel fuel economy i left it sitting for four for something like 40 minutes as i just sat in it and listened to music the his seated seat on stereo turned up it was fantastic it was mental health stereo there you go that's what it was <laughs> <laughs> i do have one tiny grumble about the sat and have an entertainment system Ooh, it's touchscreen only ah and the trouble is well it's not really an issue it's just that you forgot that it was touchscreen only because normally when you're driving a big comfy car they've got some form of or a reclined car where this where the screen is really quite far away from you it's a fair old stretch even for my simian arms you expect there to be some kind of central controller in the style of mercedes or audi or bmw or even mazda and mm. i forgot a few times and i kept trying to to change to i kept trying to change the volume with the drive mode controller ah because it's a little knob Did, I just take it that where didn't your work left then. hand falls it didn't didn't work oh it didn't work. shame no they're generally alerted by the dashboard changing color but yeah that's that's the that was my that was my only token interior gripe i'm afraid is the fact that i kept forgetting that it was touchscreen only and there wasn't a central controller but good system otherwise okay verdict wise and i think we've got a fair indication up to now of your your feelings in this on well, this there's car there's a certain amount of stockholm syndrome involved in this isn't there given that i started describing it as my foster car rather than depressed car <laughs> I was looking after it, you know, keeping it well until it could go home or go to a better place where people, where other people could love it as well. It's a lovely, lovely thing. It really is. And and if you're not uh, badge-oriented, it's a fantastic and viable alternative to large Audis or BMWs. I think a lot of people will be put off by the badge, which is right. a shame. Because when you're spending £600 a month, then people will tend to veer towards the German brands. But it is a proper big GT car. And if that's what you want, this is the car to have. I would probably choose this over most any of the other options, really, that are out and around there. It was definitely the closest to the my dearly departed infinity infinity of of any other car i've driven since i, I sold it in terms of spec in terms of in terms of feel uh, or any of those it can be big it can be lazy it can be relaxed but it can really put a shove on if you you, you squeeze your right foot uh, and this one with five doors incredibly practical as well yeah well there's two cars you've had that I've been utterly jealous that you got to drive them. Mm. This is this and the Lexus LC five hundred are the yeah. two. Yeah, uh, I think this looks absolutely brilliant, uh, and I love the fact that it isn't one of the German premiums, and yet is is right up there with them. Yes, absolutely. It's a it's a really good showcase of what Kia can do that they are more capable of producing the sportage which is 
that. I say that as if the Sportage is a bad vehicle, and it, and it isn't. But it's 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 not just about picantos and seeds. Okay, yep. they really can do it, and they really do have the expertise to be able to make proper big cars, uh, as well as as well as what they're they're more. They're they're better known for doing, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cool car. Loved it a lot. Really did. If you enjoyed that, don't forget that between now and next time, you can give us any feedback and share your thoughts with the show at Motoring Podcast on Twitter and Instagram, on Facebook, and on the contact page of motoringpodcast.com, the hub of all our activities. And please don't forget about our Patreon and don't forget to leave a review and rating on Apple Podcasts or however your podcast app lets you do such a thing. Andrew, if people want to commiserate with you, what's the best way to get in touch? Best way to get in touch with me is to uh, search for Crack Windscreen on Twitter, and you should find me there. And Alan, if people would like to know more about the the how wonderfully warm the seats are when you're sat in it listening to the wonderful stereo, what is the best way for them to find that out? Well, there's there's two ways. One way is to listen to the previous special edition all about the wonderfulness of the stereo. Uh, and the other way is to get in touch with me via Twitter, where I'm at AJP Bradley. We'll be back next week. But until then, I've been Alan Bradley. I've been Andrew Clues. And safe motoring. <laughs>